Hey guys, for this video we are going to be removing my client's extensions and reinstalling them and this is going to be the sew-in method. If you want, you guys can find me on Instagram at Christy at the cottage. Here's my clients before and we did do a bleach and tone but I already uploaded that video so here's a little clip if you want to see that part of the service. All right, so that was my little video that I uploaded to Instagram and actually it also got shared on the Blonde Solutions page, which I was super excited about. Um, but I did do a full video on the bleach and tone part of the service. So that's just a brief little clip of it. So if you guys want to watch the actual bleach and tone, then that was the last video that I uploaded before this one. All right, so I don't know if you noticed, but it has been about six to eight weeks since the last time that my client has been in, and that's about our regular um, service schedule that we do. We do her bleach and tone and extensions every time, and I have done quite a few videos of her services, which I will leak all of those in the description. If you guys like watching bleach and tones or extensions, I usually include both of those services together for one video, but I just thought that I would break them up this time to be different. So um, this is her regular grow out that she has and it's probably like maybe maybe an inch and a half or so. Um, so we're just going to go through and remove the extensions. One thing that I really like about these extensions versus doing tape in is that for one, it's by far less damaging if not damaged at all. I feel like when you do tape ins, that it's such a long time to remove and have to retape and all of that stuff. I just feel like it's such a hassle to do those types of installations. And my client really likes doing the beaded rows because she feels like it's so much more natural and she feels like it's so much less around her head and she feels like you know, she can run her hands through her hair a little bit easier or she doesn't feel like she has all this stuff on her scalp. So I feel like that's one benefit to these extensions versus like tape-ins is that um, the removal process is like, it's just a few minutes. So in comparison to trying to remove some tape-ins, I mean, that can sometimes take like an hour, you know, then you got to clarify the hair and wash it out, all the gunk and everything. So I just feel like this is such a time saver to be able to do um, some hand-tied wefts because it's just the hair basically like slides right out. And I honestly don't do a thread anymore. I kind of like doing this installation where I just kind of loop the hair from bead to bead, not using a thread. It just takes the guesswork out of it. It makes it so much easier for me. So that's just my preference. So here is her hair. We're going to remove the second row. And honestly, we were thinking we were going to do three rows of hair, but she was happy with just the two rows so that's why we didn't end up doing the third and I will say also that when we installed these last extensions that we did I thought that we were going to be doing a third row 
but she was happy with where it was at. So I probably wouldn't have dropped them down so far below the crown area. I probably would have moved them up a little bit more if I would have known we were just going to be doing the two. And here's after doing her bleach and tone. And I want to say that I would snip her ends, but sometimes I feel like, and I don't want this to sound bad, but when clients kind of have their hair a little bit kind of like broken at the ends or like if somebody needs a trim because their hair is just kind of more thin and sparse through the ends I feel like that actually benefits when somebody gets extensions I usually don't like to trim their hair because it kind of dissolves the weight line of their natural hair so for me personally, yes, I don't want to hear in the comments like, oh, she needs a haircut. Like we do snip her ends sometimes, but normally we just kind of blend it. So I feel like when somebody's weight line is a little bit more sparse like that, it just helps blend with the extensions much more naturally. If you guys are interested in learning in detail and by step by step um, better than what I can show you on YouTube, I highly recommend you guys following Zach Mesquit. He is known previously as Platinum Perfection on Instagram. So look him up. He also has this monthly subscription called platinum posse which is where i actually learned this specific method of extensions and i highly 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 recommend you guys be a part of his monthly subscription i think it's like 11 dollars a month or something like that i think i misquoted one time and said it was like 30 dollars a month which i would happily pay $30, but I honestly, I think it was like $11 or something super low like that. He gives you all his tips and tricks as far as extensions, color, blonding. If you are a blonding hairstylist or if you're a stylist that wants more education on blonding, bleach and tone, toning for platinum blondes, whatever extensions, he does different methods. I 100% highly recommend you joining the platinum posse go to his instagram you can sign up there i have learned so much from um following him he saves all of his work in his instagram stories on that closed private account so you can always go back and refer to them which is so nice because there's so many times like when i was first learning this particular method it was nice that I could just go in there and like re-watch everything to make sure that I was getting everything right and he also does live videos and he also will respond if you have any questions you can always ask him where I know a lot of the time some of those really big hair artists on Instagram like they're not trying to give out any of their secrets, any of their formulations. You can message them, ask them questions, and they won't get back to you. So that's one of the nice things is that with your um, monthly subscription that you pay, you can also message. I've messaged him plenty of times, and he always gets back to me. So I really appreciate that about him. So I highly recommend if you're interested in learning this type of technique of extensions, um, going to, to his Platinum Posse page or on Instagram, it will direct you to that and joining and signing up for it. I think he has like a thousand subscribers or um, followers there. So it's just nice to be able to get that kind of one-in-one -one experience that you feel like you're getting from him. All right, now that we're on to the other side, we are going to take a little bit of a section of her hair that's not looped through. And then we're also going to take half of the section of hair that was looped through the bead. And we're going to combine those together and then insert those through a new bead. And that's what's going to create our 
for a uh, foundation that we're making so you can kind of see those little dropout pieces of hair i'm only taking like half the hair for every section and then combining that into the new section of hair and so that kind of replaces the string i don't mind the string application but i felt like i was like always second guessing myself or questioning like am i doing this right and i have such an easier time not having the string so I'm glad that I learned that way, but I just feel like this is so much faster and removes that step of having to try to question yourself like, am I nodding it right? Did I do it right? Am I like looping it the right way or whatever? So um, tying it off, all that stuff. So for me, this was just like a no brainer to be able to do my foundation this way without using the string. So I've watched a few videos of other hairstylists that are self-taught um, doing their hand-tied extensions or their sew-in method or whatever. And some of the services that, that I watch them do, when you guys are putting the beads up to the hair, like pull the bead tight to the scalp and then kind of relax a little bit. You don't want to see the scalp pulling when you're doing the bead. You want to make sure that you're releasing it a little bit so that it's, you know, you have it nice up to the scalp, but it's not pulling the hair at all. That's what's going to give you guys like bald spots or what's going to cause the hair to pull out. There have been times where people will come in and if this is a service that they've done many times, you can always see like a, a shoe horse, a horseshoe, shoe horse. You, you know what the hell I'm talking about. You can always see a horseshoe around their head where the hair is kind of thinning where the track is because it's pulling so tightly that it's pulling the hair out. So make sure if you're doing this part of the service, anything that has to do with like tight up to the scalp, make sure you're kind of releasing the hair just a little bit so that way it's not pulling too much and not going to cause any damage or any thinning in those areas. And this is why I don't really go into too much detail about this service where normally for color I get, or like bleach or whatever, I tell you exactly how to do things sometimes. And I feel like if you're not in person watching it or if somebody isn't recording it and being able to hold the phone very close so you can see exactly what's going on, like I don't know how to describe this to you. And how to tell you how to do it. It's like you have to watch and you have to be able to see very clearly. And I feel like I don't, I'm not able unless I have somebody standing right next to me to record this part of the service and to tell you exactly how to do it as I'm doing it. Um, that's why I feel like it's good to go get in-person training for this part of the service and that's why I don't really go into too much detail about it because I feel like I cannot give you the best education for this service that you could probably get and I don't want to tell you the wrong way of doing things or not give you the best information or the most accurate information if you can't see it very good from the angle that I'm able to show you so maybe someday if it's something that you guys want then maybe I could get like a mannequin and try to figure out like 
maybe having somebody come in and record for me, but I'd have to like figure out somebody to do that. So anyways, long story short, I just feel like I'm not capable of giving you the best knowledge on it. So that's why a lot of times when it comes to hand tied wefts or, um, you know, I'm not like giving you a whole bunch of information or telling you like how exactly to loop the hair or how you're supposed to do the thread in this part, because like, I don't even know the words to say, um, unless I was recording it for you specifically as I was doing the service. Um, so, and that would have to be on a mannequin or something. So that's why I'm saying if you go to Zach at the Platinum Posse, like he really breaks it down. And I think he has his wife there to record for him so that you guys can get the best view and the best angle. And I just don't think that I'm able to provide that for you necessarily. So that's why I, like for right now, for usually in this part of the service, I usually like don't say anything because um I feel like it would just be confusing and hard to understand so uh, yeah I just wanted to let you guys know that I feel like you could learn some from somebody better than what I am able to tell you so um yeah that's why I kind of don't give too much information here because I don't want to be too confusing All right, now that we're finished with our first weft, we're going to glue it in, make sure that this knot is secure, and then snip it off. And this is the first time that I've gone through and flat iron the hair as I go. I feel like it just helps it look a lot neater. My sections are a lot cleaner looking, and I can see exactly what hair um, needs to be exactly where I need it and how the hair is blending. So this is a step that I normally would wait until the very end, but I actually have liked doing it this way in this service to make sure that I can see that the hair is blending nicely. And then it also lays a lot better for when I'm getting my next section that I will be doing.
All right, so one thing that I kind of don't like about the hand tied extensions is that I noticed from a lot of people, and I'm actually going to discuss this with my client towards the end of the video, but I feel like a lot of people, they stay like an inch or two off of the hairline. Well, then when the hair is all down, it's like you can still kind of see the natural hair up front. And I see that from a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of stylists where everything looks great from the back, but then up in the very front area, like you can see that it's, you know, the hair is a little bit shorter or a little bit thinner. So I really like the idea of taking some tape-ins if your client is okay with it or if they want you to and just kind of popping a few tape-ins just maybe like two sections just right in the front and I feel like that will kind of fill in that spot where it feels a little bit thinner or not as full where the extensions are just in the top area and that will kind of help blend a little bit better. So sometimes you have to combine two methods like I know tape ins aren't my favorite like I like doing tape ins but after doing these I definitely prefer doing the sewn ones but I feel like adding a few tape ins could be beneficial just to kind of help blend the hair and make sure that it's nice and full around the front of the face too. Well, and honestly, the thing about this kind that kind of I noticed from a lot of hairstylists that it kind of bothers me is I feel like because it wraps around the back of the head that sometimes it doesn't come up far enough in this area. Yeah. So then 
when it falls forward, like sometimes there's too much of the natural hair and it, it yeah. you don't have that length in the front kind of covering exactly, up. Exactly, yeah. Too, so that's why I'm like, uh, you know? Yeah. But, um, so sometimes I'm like, do we want to get some tape in to like just pop like right, right in that area, you know? But, I mean, people are, hurt. people are happy, they're happy, but. Yeah, sometimes I'm like, do we just want to put like a few things in there? I feel like the tape in ones kind of damaged my hair a lot more than the than these. Yeah, ones probably because you're having to like pull them out a little bit harder. Yeah, and... there'd be a couple times a couple of them pop out and stuff. And oh really? That's just, and that's just how it is because yeah. I wash my hair, conditioner, that kind of thing, and this stuff just feels more real. All right, so that was just part of the conversation that we had about adding some little tape-ins and popping some in, and she's she's fine with how her extensions are, so we'll just leave it at that. And her hair does look fine, and I don't notice it so much on her hair. But if you do feel like you can see a little bit in the front where their natural hair falls, just take some shears and try to blend the extensions with their natural hair and like kind of give them more of a facial framing look and that will help diminish that line if you feel like you notice that in your client's hair you shouldn't really ever be able to see like you know the natural hair versus the extensions because everything should blend seamlessly and you shouldn't really be able to tell the difference so which is one reason why I do like these extensions I feel like if you do like tape-ins or you know the keratin ones or whatever sometimes they can look like the keratin ones, the eye tip ones especially can look stringy since they're just like the little pieces. So, and then the tape ends, you have to really make sure that you're putting in a full amount everywhere to really get lots of coverage so that you don't see the individual strands. So that's one reason why I like doing these ones because it just looks so much more natural. You don't see any different like breaks in the hair where you know, you have some installed and not. It's like you just have a nice even track wrapped around. So now it just creates a nice natural look. So if you guys haven't done this part of the part of extensions or this type of extensions, I highly recommend you guys at least trying out and seeing how you feel about it. The installation, the removal, everything like that is so much easier. I mean, I remember when I was doing like eye tip extensions those would take hours, hours and hours and hours. And then the removal would take hours on top of it. So it's just so much nicer to have something that is faster. It's a lot cleaner. The removal process is so much less also. Um, so just always try new things and see what works best for you. Wow, it, it blends pretty good. Matches yeah. so perfectly. Yeah, that's crazy. Um, do you want any? I mean, since we did it last time, I don't know that we'll need to do it now. But like any of the, I don't, I don't think we need to since it's the it's, same. Yeah, it's really not. I mean, I've already got some like little pieces here. Yeah, that looks great. Yeah, sweet. And I don't have to wash it. I know. You're like, I'm gonna be good to go for a while. <laughs> okay, here's her after and you know, after her color and everything that we did, but here is her extensions. Everything blends so nicely. You can't see like where her hair is and where the extensions is. So, um, thank you guys so much for watching. If you sat through this whole thing, I appreciate it. Let me know if you like these videos where we just kind of focus on extensions. Thank you guys so much for watching and don't forget to like, and subscribe.